Hey, what's up? Welcome to this channel called How to Drum and Bass. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at how to create the main squishy, scorchy, growly sound from this tune. Alright, nice. I absolutely love that tune. AMC has been killing it in the last couple of years and he makes sounds that I don't really hear that much anywhere else. So today we're gonna have a look at how to create one of those. And if you're new here, this is How to Drum and Bass. On this channel, we break down what the top performers are doing right now and how to recreate those sounds or sometimes even entire drops or sometimes even entire songs. And our recreation sounds like this. So yeah, pretty accurate. I would say that, you know, this is definitely gonna sound a little bit more encompassed in a entire mix, but this is generally speaking, the sort of sound that, that is being created here. And uh, we're gonna look at a couple of ways uh, how to produce this, but also how to make it sound a little bit more uh, your own and how to sort of vary what comes out of this, uh, what comes out of this serum patch. And it's gonna actually employ a pretty interesting technique that has to do with the positive and negative part of the waveform. So we're gonna learn something cool today. Let's dive in. All right, so we can see here that I already have the uh, recreation here, of course, that I made you here, but we're gonna make it from scratch. And to do that, that we're actually going to get two channels. We're going to get a channel with these notes. And by the way, you can download these MIDI notes in the link below in the free preset link if you want to go along with this. And also we're going to be using two wavetables that aren't native to Serum. Uh, they're actually part of the Anna 2 wavetable. So that's another synthesizer. And the other ones are from Vital. The Vital ones I think you can download for free online. The Anna 2 ones maybe. But if you can't find those, then you can actually use some other wavetables, which I'll tell you about, or you can just download them also in the link below for free, which might be easier for you. All right, so we have actually two things. This is going to need its own separate little sub. So we have a little sub here with the same uh, notes that are playing uh, in this MIDI file. And that sub is really simple. We're not going to spend too much time on it. It just sounds like this. If we want to have a look at the serum patch, it's essentially nothing more than a BD sign that is being filtered a little bit and has got a little bit of distortion, and then it has an envelope controlling the uh, level. So that's actually pretty uh, boring. Uh, but we're going to need that because we're going to cut whatever we're going to make here because uh, it's going to need a clean sub. So let's have a look at how we can make the main part of the sound from scratch. I've got this channel here called Recreation with a fresh serum patch, and we're going to start by pulling up two wavetables. So like I said, I'm going to use some of these Anna 2 wavetables because I've been messing around and I feel like these sound the best, but you don't need to. So for the first one, I'm going to go into this 3D wavetables from Anna 2 and I'm going to go for this garage bass. And that is actually just because when I push this wavetable up to somewhere like here, this is going to give me the best nice little crunchy tone. If you don't have this wavetable, actually a good solution is to just use the mini bass from the analog section. If you put the wavetable somewhere yet yeah, close, it also has this same little curviness uh, that the, uh, the garage bass has. And the same for oscillator B is I'm going to go and choose one of the vital wavetables, which is this square saw two. And we're going to do something special to this wavetable. But uh, basically, you can actually, if you go and look at this wavetable position, uh, this is almost the same as the um, some of the saw wavetables in the analog section here. So you can just find one that looks like it. What we want, though, for the wavetable is we're going to put this mirror function on it because we want to reach something along the lines of this, where most of the wavetable is in the negative part. So it's so it's almost the opposite of a rectified wavetable. And this is going to be useful because we're going to use this to modulate the first one. So we're going to pull the level of this down. And we can leave this at one octave, but I'm going to put this one at an octave down. And we're going to apply FM from B here. Uh, because basically, we want to impose this super negative wave onto this garage bass here. For now, we're going to turn this all the way up because, um, well, that gives the nicest sound. But we'll, we'll but we'll run through sort of how you can tweak that as well. And you can hear that that's gonna give us already like a really nice and crunchy, very coarse sound. However, you can hear that we obviously need to do some shaping here. So we're gonna take this LFO one and we're gonna draw an interesting shape. We're gonna do something like this. I want the first part to be at pretty full intensity. And then the second part, kind of a little bit less. This is almost like a pluck, except for a pluck, it would probably be something like this, but I wanna have this. And you can play a lot with the shape also to affect how the sound goes. So that's definitely one of your creative tools here. All right, and we're basically gonna be applying this to a lot of parameters uh, just to cause a lot of movement. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna push it onto this level here. And actually, we don't even want this level to be super high. I'll show you why in a minute. And of course, we have to put this on trigger mode as well. All right, so the next couple of things we're gonna do is we're gonna create some movement with this shape. Let's actually draw this out a tiny little bit. And let's also put this on the wavetable position here. Let's make it go 
pretty much all the way there. And now you can hear that we're already getting a little bit more shaping. And we're also going to put both of these at a detune because that's going to give us a nice little sort of glazing on the top, like a little bit of extra sort of hollow crunchiness which you can hear right now. Another cool thing that we can do to create some movement is actually uh, put this detune up and automate that as well, just to give it a little bit more sort of differentiated width. Cool. And then let's also affect how much it affects this mirror. And you still wanna keep the waveform as much as possible in this rectified area. If you don't, it's gonna sound a little bit uh, too um, robotic for me. One thing you could also do is you could actually detune one of these wavetables slightly uh, just to create a little bit of extra sort of character to it. Nice. Then let's start applying a filter. And so what we can do here is we can accentuate uh, two points with one of these multi filters. So we can actually, for example, use the, use the HP 12 for that. And we can put this thing on the cutoff as well uh, of the first and of the second frequency. And we can kind of find two points here that we want to accentuate. So let's turn up that resonance so that we see that we get two bumps here. And uh, let's see where we want those bumps to be. And it's probably gonna be something like this. Nice. And actually let's pull this one back a little bit like that. And let's turn this one that way. I think that's quite nice. Let's give it some drive as well. Think that's already starting to sound a lot like what we're looking for here. Hey, so sorry to interrupt, but I just want to tell you something that you might find interesting. I think you're watching this video because you want to learn more about how to produce drum and bass. And if you are really taking that seriously, then you may want to have a look at our flagship membership, the School of Drum and Bass. School of Drum and Bass is my passion project. It's my mission to help the world produce more and better drum and bass. And it's a super affordable membership in which we cover everything you need to know, both about music production, but also specifically about producing drum and bass. And we have an incredible amount of videos about everything. We cover everything all the way from like how to use Ableton all the way to sort of what is drum and bass and how does it work and what are the drum patterns and all that kind of stuff. Getting familiar with your synthesizer. We have hours of videos on how to use Serum. We have videos covering every single popular sound in drum and bass and how to make it and the theory behind how to make those sounds. We have professional mixing and mastering classes. We have start to finish mixing and mastering sessions where we do entire drops or entire songs and very soon even we're going to be adding complete start to finish tracks where we literally make a track completely from scratch all the way to finishing it and take you along for the ride. This membership literally is the biggest and most extensive drum and bass learning resource on the planet right now. And the best thing is we got a deal right now where you can join your first seven days for just one British pound. That's literally like a dollar 15 or one euro 10 for more than 300 videos. And we're posting new super extensive videos at least every single week with new topics and more creative sound design stuff and more complex arrangement based tutorials as well. Basically everything that you'd ever want to know plus more. So if you want to go check that out, Go to the link below or just go to howtodrumandbass.com and you'll find the school of drum and bass. All right, without further ado, let's move on to the rest of the video. So then let's go into the effects. Let's actually apply some hyper and dimension. Let's re-trigger that as well. Just to give it a little bit more width, we do not want any dimension because that's going to make it sound too spread out. And we can actually turn this detune up or down. We could even turn the rate of this all the way down if we want. All right, let's also add a little bit of extra grit to it. Let's, let's take a flanger, because uh, that's basically, if we put the rate down, it's just gonna imp impose a comb filter on it, which is really gonna be quite nice for this sound. And let's, uh, well, a full mix is gonna sound a bit exaggerated, especially when this depth is all up, but we might want to just blend in a little bit of that for some extra crunchiness. Let's toss a multiband compressor on there as well. And we're gonna be taking down these highs a little bit because we're gonna do some saturation and then we're gonna bring those highs back up. So something like that we'll probably do. All right, next, what we can do is we can actually put some distortion on here. And traditional distortion is probably gonna make this sound a little bit... Just a little bit um, more crunchy, but what you can also do is you can put a down sample on there and just give it a little bit more of that glistening on the top. And then just turn that mix down a bit. Something like that might be a nice little twist. Let's also add an EQ so that we can uh, actually just maybe have some control over uh, a little bit of a high shelf. 
uh, that we can just make move with this as well. So let's actually apply that to the gain. So that the gain moves along with the shape of the sound here. And with, let's move the frequency to something like a thousand hertz. <laughs> Let's actually maybe move that before the distortion. And so, yeah, you can kind of control with this one if you wanted to how much of the rest of the sort of like crunchy layers are coming through in that top end. Cool. We might even pull the mix back down on this down sample a little bit. Nice. Then another thing that I would like to do is actually go ahead and already start adding some comb filtering here. We'll add some more in post-processing just to add some little details to the sound. But what I like doing here is just add a whole bunch of layers that are not completely blended in. So let's go and do that. Let's go here and let's grab one of these combs filter. Uh, this one is good because it has all odd harmonics, which will kind of fit the fact that we're also working with this strange negative waveform here. And so we could actually also take the cutoff of this and, uh, and let it be controlled. And that's also going to give it a nice little boost in the lows here um, because as soon as you put that cu cutoff all the way up, that just uh, gives a little bit extra body in everything before the comb. So that's going to be cool. Let's pull that resonance up a bit and the drive up a bit as well. This is now turning very loud, so we can actually turn this gain down here probably. And you can hear that we're really getting a very full but very coarse sound. And like sometimes when you do this, it gets a little bit thin. But because we're being adding all these little layers with the uh, distortion and with the combs, uh, you know, and we're going to pull this back obviously a little bit. Um, and also with this uh, with this flanger here, just, you know, with the mix pull back a little bit, we're just putting layers and layers and layers upon it, making it a thicker sound. So that's already sounding pretty good. And then we can just do some extra additional post-processing. So uh, one of the things that you could do is actually add an amp. So whenever I want to really get a super crunchy top end, I really like using the uh, amp here like at a clean setting. Not so much dry wet we don't need, but uh, it will really give you a little bit of extra exaggeration here. Now this is obviously very loud. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna just turn this down in the master here. And we're going to put this on dual as well. This is definitely giving it a little bit too much. Let's turn that volume down. Yeah, that's uh, that's doing a nice little trick for us, I think. And another thing we could do, of course, is we could add something like ShaperBox. And we could actually go and find a, uh, a region to accentuate with some uh, distortion to uh, to sort of give a little bit more body to the sound, but not, you know, saturate the entire thing, because that's going to be kind of messy. So let's go on something crazy here, like this triangle fold. Let's push this uh, drive all the way up, and let's pick a band here. And we're just going to move that band around and see what sounds good. And you'll you'll notice that it definitely changes the interpretation of the sound in a, a quite a quite an interesting way. So this is going to sound it make it sound like more heavy. Whereas here, it's gonna sound more resy almost. And so I might turn the mix down of this a bit as well. I'd say that for me personally, that sounds really cool. And so I'll say at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, and I like to sort of like fine tune this a little bit extra. I like to add like comb filters and maybe like a reverb filter with some serum effects to sort of see if that sounds any better. So let's do that real quick and then we'll wrap up the sound as well. Um, so one thing that I really like doing, which you can always just kind of put on something to check if it makes your sound any cooler is just take one of these kilohertz comb filters. They have a plus and a minus option and it's just a little bit more workable than serum effects. And um, let's pull this mix down just a little bit just to create another blended in layer. Let's put it on stereo as well uh, so that we get a wider sound. Sound. And I'm finding that here around that 1K area, that's really sounding nice to me. That's really sounding super gnarly. We can also put on this minus. But that's kind of starting to hurt my ears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it where we just were. We're going to put it on plus. We're going to put it like around 1,000 kilohertz. So I like that. And then I always, you know, when we have these sort of really coarse sounds, I really feel like adding a serum effects with a reverb filter is always worth checking out as well. Uh, just because you can kind of get a sort of similar effect to that comb. But it's just, it's just a slightly different filter uh, that for me usually just does some really cool things. So let's do that as well. And then I think we kind of have the sound probably. Let's grab this. So yeah, 
Yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty spot on to me. And so let's now really quickly dive back into this serum patch and just kind of show you um, how you can change the sound to be your own. So first of all, all these comb filters that are here and the you know the shaper box and all the all the amp stuff that we're doing, you can definitely go ahead and sort of try out like different settings on that to see how it sounds. But also we can go ahead and uh, go back into these wavetables. So I wouldn't change this square saw wavetable too much because that's basically what's getting us this really core sound right now. Uh, but you can play around with these positions on the filter, of course, to accentuate different frequencies. And you can move through some different wavetables. So the first way to move through wavetables is to change the uh, the way that the FM works, right? So, so you can hear that this actually sounds a little bit less crunchy on the top. It sounds a little bit more sort of coarse and down to earth. And here it starts sounding kind of negative, right? So yeah, that's... Uh, this one definitely gives the most top end. That makes sense as well because FM like in the top ranges just gives a lot of top end because that's how FM works. Um, but then we can also, we can actually pick different wavetables. So I don't really recommend taking any ones of the ones that are too squiggly, like the spectral wavetables are a bit, a bit much sometimes. <laughs> as you can hear. But what you can do is you can go through some of these analog ones that don't have that much movement, but that just have interesting shape. And you'll see that as soon as they have too many lines, they start being kind of eh. But for example, like I said, this mini bass before. You can definitely find some interesting things in there. Similarly, you know, you have a bunch of wavetables here in the um, in the digital section, such as this dull toy. That I think sound pretty good. But yeah, that is basically your choice to go through. And you can also change actually how much of this mirroring you want to apply. That'll also quite drastically change the sound. So this definitely sounds a bit more angry, auto body kind of thing. And it'll get coarser the more you change this mirror. So yeah, that's the sound. If you want to download again the preset of the final result that you heard at the start of the video, you can download it in the link below. And also, once again, if you want to learn more about drum and bass production, then make sure to check out howtodrumandbass.com. Especially go and check out the School of Drum and Bass membership, like I told you earlier in the video. It's totally worth your time, and I highly recommend it for all starting producers. All right, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.